welcome uh, Joshua to TEDx Johannesburg. Uh, great to have you here. Thank you. You and I, in the next 15 minutes, are going to have a conversation where we'll be exploring some of the ideas that you have in agriculture. But before we go there, the narrative in agriculture currently is, is of food security. Uh, I mean, the numbers say about 8.5 billion people uh, will be in the world by 2030, uh, 9.7 billion in, in 2015. We're having issues of, 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 of climate change. We're having issues of, um, you know, lack of skilled farmers. With all these challenges facing uh, agriculture, what is it that you and your team, you know, have worked on to alleviate these challenges? Um, I think the, um, uh, as far as we, uh, we, we are concerned, we think that the future is in the young people. Uh, this morning, uh, Jack was talking about the, uh, the fact that the, uh, the average uh, age of farmers is 62. We need to bring that to as, uh, uh, as low as 30. So we need to start uh, 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 developing uh, young people. So we need to attract uh, people to uh, farming. We need to uh, develop them into uh, successful entrepreneurs. Okay. But I mean, agriculture, especially farming, is not a very sexy, lucrative, uh, you know, industry. Young people would rather work for an investment bank. How do you how do you change that perception? Uh, we looked at that and we thought, since young people uh, these days like technology, I think we need to introduce them to uh, modern uh, uh, farming practices that has got the, uh, a strong technology component. Secondly, we need to use a holistic approach in developing them into successful entrepreneurs. Okay. And the, uh, another thing that the, uh, we need to bear in mind is that the um, solutions to societal problems shouldn't be complex. Uh, my favorite example uh, is the, uh, luggage. Uh, if you uh, were born in my time, uh, we, uh, for decades, uh, we used the, to carry uh, heavy uh, luggage that gave us pinched nerves and, uh, and bad backs. Until uh, someone who was tired of this decided to put wheels on his luggage. Okay. And the... Uh, you remember it's wheels, not electric motors or, or electric cars. Wheels, and those wheels have changed uh, the way we travel for the better. And uh, so as we look at uh, solving our societal problems, let's find okay. those wheels. But how do you put wheels on these agricultural challenges? Um, for the past three and a half years, my team and I started the, uh, looking for wheels that we can use to develop agri-entrepreneurs. Um, we looked at the various uh, solutions uh, uh, that we could use as uh, holistic methods to develop the uh, young farmers. And uh, we think we found one. Um, and the, since we developed the, uh, this through our uh, agriculture subsidiary, African Greeners, or AG in short, uh, we, do, uh, we, we call it uh, the AG franchise model. We in, intend to uh, train young uh, candidates through our uh, modern training facilities with own uh, farm so that they can get practical experience. Okay, but take us through the model. How does this model work? How does it put wheels on agricultural challenges? The way it works is that, the, uh, first of all, uh, for, for, for you to succeed, you cannot work on your own. You need to be a, big, a, a, a group so that you've got economies of scale. So the idea is to uh, take about the, um, a maximum of 10 uh, uh, candidates that uh, have competence, dedication, and passion. Then we will bring them on our training facilities. Uh, we give them technical skills training, and we give them uh, business skills training. And the, the way the system is now, that's where everything stops. 
because once the young people have reached stage, they give them certificates of qualification and they drop them on the, they will floor them on the streets where they can go and look for jobs. Uh, there is no alternative uh, exit plan. We need to change that. So what we decided within our organization is uh, let's go further than that. Let's make it a 360 degree uh, model where now uh, while they are being trained, we need to start looking at funding options because we will need to give them, uh, uh, we need to, uh, to have money to, to, to develop uh, the system. And then we need to find land either from government or from tribal authorities or even from individuals uh, on which we will settle them once they finish. And then uh, with the funds that we've got, then we can build infrastructure so that uh, they are ready to occupy and start producing. And then uh, with the money that we have, then we can build farming facilities and uh, buy inputs. And then from day one, uh, with our network of uh, agricultural specialists and business uh, specialists, uh, you want to work with these guys on the job so that uh, they understand how to uh, uh, operate in a proper agribusiness. Then uh, we need to uh, get them accredited for uh, technical standards like Global Gap and the like so that uh, they are able to produce foods to higher standards that can be accepted by higher markets uh, as well as for export. And then uh, once the, uh, the produce is ready, it comes to the center where we are able to uh, sort, process and package. And then uh, we uh, uh, arrange for logistics and access to markets. That way, uh, there's a 360 degree uh, approach. And the, so this farmer, first of all, we've uh, uh, got the uh, people that are behind him where they are giving him coaching and mentoring provision of uh, business support services, which we did from our own organization, as well as the administration. And secondly, uh, there's someone that is able to take, uh, uh, there's a ready market where they can uh, uh, take the, uh, the stuff. And so you've got a number of facilities that are shared. And uh, so all you are saying to this farmer is uh, focus on primary agriculture. We will handle your business support services and we'll handle your market. And the, uh, the likelihood uh, for that farmer to fail is remote. So, so, so this looks like a tech incubator of some sort, but in the agricultural space? Yeah, yes, it, it is like an incubator, but it's in, it's in the real world. Okay. You don't feel like you are being uh, trained because you are actually working okay. in a commercial environment. Okay. So on paper, this looks awesome. I mean, implementation, that's where the challenge is. You know, take us through how you have implemented this, or if you have. Um, this has been a, 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 a long-term journey. Uh, in, ten, in, in 2012, uh, we, we found the uh, 21-acre farm in Centurion that was on sale. This area is not suitable for agriculture because it's rocky and there's a shortage of water. While this posed a challenge, we thought, I'm a miner, we like challenges. Uh, we thought this challenge was good because it uh, 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 afforded us an opportunity to demonstrate how to grow food in challenging conditions that we are going to encounter in the future due to climate change. So we bought it. Uh, and and, and, and the, then in uh, 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 late 2014, we came in, we cut uh, most of the trees, we uprooted them. Uh, we came and uh, uh, removed all the rocks that there. we ripped the rocks out of the ground. We uh, uh, we, we plowed that and uh, we added uh, compost and nutrients. Mm -hmm. And uh, by uh, the beginning of 2015, we had the land that was suitable for crop production. Uh, then then we, we drilled uh, more boreholes because we don't have water, and we installed more tanks so that we got the more uh, water capacity. And uh, today, we have uh, uh, the property has been turned into a modern uh, facility uh, where we grow uh, high-value crops that we sell to uh, supermarkets and the local community. So this is how uh, you know the the state current status of of the farm. Uh, this is it, it was the state until uh, uh, about a month ago 
We have already started expanding. We, uh, are, are right now, we've got people that are putting up a shed net. We are adding another uh, 13 tunnels and a, a small, uh, fully equipped greenhouse. Okay. So, so, so what, what is the impact? I mean, what has been the impact or the highlights or successes of, of this project so far? We, we wanted now to test this model of how we would do, operate in the, in the real life. Because uh, if you looked at there, is, uh, we, we developed it, we, we, we put infrastructure and so on, so that we can just settle uh, the junior farmer. And that's what the, this model would work uh, uh, like in future. So we decided uh, to get uh, uh, Kosnati, who is uh, here, okay. uh, just behind there. Okay. Uh, we, he's a graduate from uh, Sedala College. And he, uh, he wanted to be uh, mentored and say, well, if you want to be mentored, then you have to do the real work. Yeah. So we brought him in. <laughs> and uh, we said, assume this is your farm, run it. So we brought him uh, agricultural specialists to help him, uh, uh, IP specialists, and with ourselves, uh, we provide the uh, uh, business support services. And uh, he has managed one season. This is his crop. You've got turmeric in two tunnels. We had tomato that we finished uh, growing. We've got the red pepper, green pepper. And uh, uh, we, we can see that uh, this method, uh, this would work because uh, we got someone uh, who we brought fresh from college and he's been able to produce food, quality food that is acceptable by a lot of supermarkets. This is fascinating. Um, yeah, you have tested it with one, right? Uh, uh, so, so from here, from here, what's next? The next thing now is that the, from the experience that we get and the, the feedback that we get back from uh, 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 him, we can use that to refine the, uh, the model so that we can use it for candidates that we bring in the future. Okay, and training facilities? Uh, we have uh, already started working on this design. The design is at an advanced stage. We got all the training programs in place. Uh, 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 and and the, the only thing that stands in our way is to get the uh, uh, payment from our local municipality so that we can use the place as a, a, a place of instruction. Um, and the, uh, it will have its own uh, uh, farm where people can uh, practically be able to operate and so that when they leave this place, they are ready to go and do their own business on the, uh, a viable uh, scale. So this is the complete picture of the farm and the training facilities? In, that's that, uh, that's uh, what wow. it is. So we got a 21 acre uh, uh, facility that we're using as a, a 21 acre showroom, basically. Wow. This is quite fascinating, uh, Joshua, I mean, from an engineer to a farmer. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is quite remarkable work that you and your, and your team are doing. Um, so what we are looking at is that the, uh, for this to, uh, 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 this is the, the beginning uh, and the, uh, the model is, uh, um, is aimed at the contributing towards food security and job creation, uh, thereby uh, uh, enab enabling us to, 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 uh, to to have uh, 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 the future uh, uh, farmers that we need to, uh, okay. to, to take us forward. Uh, so but for this to, to work, you cannot do it alone. Um, I'm a mining engineer. You, we need the, uh, the, uh, the efforts of, the collective efforts of all the specialists in this room and elsewhere in order for uh, this to work. Uh, we owe it to our country. Awesome. Uh, this is all remarkable, and yeah, from the Jovec uh, Telecom team, we wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you.